Hi, welcome back to Point and Shoot, our show about basic photography. I'm your host, Susan Hagstrom, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be talking to two guests about some new technology, somewhat new, maybe new to you, and uh, how you can incorporate that technology into your photography or maybe your videography. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to use a GoPro. Many of you may have heard about this. It's been on the scene since 2002. That's when it was first developed out in California by someone who was attempting to get some better sports action shots, trying to get close-ups of um, surfing, skateboarding, that kind of thing, and uh, wasn't having enough success with a regular 35 millimeter. So he developed something called a GoPro. And Today I'm really excited to have a guest who is a little bit of an expert, and uh, his, my guest today is David Parsons. So welcome to the show, David. Thank you, Susan. I know David from uh, being a member of the South Shore Camera Club. We're both members of that club, which uh, I think I've mentioned on the show before. It's an outstanding club. It's a, an outstanding way to develop your photographic skills and also learn a lot. Um, Dave is a very active member in our club. Uh, he's an excellent photographer in his own right. Um, he's also a little bit of a, uh, of a gadget expert. He's one of our go-to guys uh, when we have technology questions. So uh, he's going to be our guest today and, and talk to us about how to use a GoPro. So uh, David, first let's back up a little bit and talk to you about your interest in photography. Okay. Uh, you have a, a regular day job. I do. But in your spare time, I'm assuming you, you know, you've, I know you've developed this big interest in photography. Now, now, um, when did that interest begin and, and how did that all start? Uh, about 12 years ago, I, I got a point-and-shoot camera when I lived in <laughs> Boston. And I started walking around taking pictures of my neighborhood and things that looked interesting. Okay. And I progressed. I bought a slightly better cameras through the years. And I got really serious when I bought my first DSLR. Okay. And since then, I've been been about as serious as you can get. Yeah. And were you mostly self-taught or because, I mean, I, I can I can attest to the fact that you've got great skills. Um, was it just, you know, and I, I imagine you would agree that you've developed some of those skills through the camera club, mm -hmm. but um, did you take workshops or, you know, other uh, more formal educational classes or was it mostly just, uh, you know, trial and error and learning on your own? Uh, mostly it was um, all self-taught. Okay. I, I have taken some some workshops here and there, but okay. mostly it's it's reading and practicing and trying and yeah. experimentation. Yeah, and that's great for our viewers to know because um, you know that anyone can do it, right? If you've got the passion mm -hmm. and you want to put in the time, um, you're proof that you can really develop your skills. So let's uh, talk about the GoPro. How did you uh, you know what first interested you in using one? Well, I had heard about them. I mean, through the internet and seen seen people talking about them, and about about a year and a half ago, they were on sale at uh, Best Buy, so I picked one up on okay. a whim. And how do you incorporate, um, you know, those kinds of things? Do you use them for? And we're going to talk specifically about you know the different parts and how to use them. But um, they take still photos mm -hmm. and video. Yes. And so, do you incorporate both those? Uh, I primarily I primarily use use them for video or time lapse. Okay. Uh, it do, it does do uh, still pictures. Okay. It's a fisheye lens, so everything looks distorted. Okay. So some people like that. I I because I do have a DSLR. I I tend to use that for normal looking pictures. Okay. And because the GoPro is small and versatile, and you can put it anywhere. I use that for time lapse and and videos where I couldn't put my uh, DSLR. Okay, which is exactly how I read a little bit about how it was developed, and and that was basically it was developed to solve a problem, and the problem mm -hmm. was that you couldn't use a, a you know big DSLR in certain you know action sports photography or whatever. It started 2002, and now it's over. It, that company is worth over two and a half billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So obviously, a lot of people <laughs> thought you know it solved a problem for them as well. Well, let's take a closer look at the camera itself. Now you talked about the fish islands, the and and there are several different versions mm -hmm. of the camera. What what can you tell us about? Um, you know, if someone's interested in just getting started, they've never used one before. What do you have any recommendations? Uh, well, there's several. There's several um, models of the of the GoPro. Right. Uh, I'm I'm using the the uh, 
the Hero 3 Plus Silver. Okay. This is the last year's model. The, right now, they every year they uh, come out with a new version. Okay. Right now, they're on the, the Hero 4. Okay. Every time they come out with a new version, they increase the video specs oh. and the, uh, the frame rate and the night performance. Oh, so okay. The, they don't sell the older versions anymore, so if you go into the store, you're going to find what's currently out there. Okay. And what they have is the, they have the, uh, the entry, mo entry level model is the, the Hero. Okay. And how much does something like that cost? The Hero is $129. So pretty, pretty reasonable. It's, it's affordable. It's yeah. easy, easy to get into. Okay. The, the Hero 4 Silver is $399, and the Hero 4 Black is Four ninety nine. So that's quite a jump. And what's the difference in performance between those? Uh, the the higher you get from hero to silver to black, the um, more video modes you have. Okay. You get more video resolution. You have more frame, uh, higher frame rate. So if you want to do slow motion, you, sh you can shoot in a higher frame rate and slow it down oh, okay. when you're making the video. In post. Okay. So why don't you just give us, it looks like, um, too, that has a case on it. Now, are these things, they're waterproof or? The, the case is waterproof. Okay. The, the camera itself, you can see right here, it's, it's not waterproof at all. Oh, okay. If you, if you drop this in water, it would, it would die. <laughs> okay. But with the case on it. So you purchased the case separately? No, the case actually comes oh. with it. Okay. So that's that's one of the uh, nice selling features about the GoPro is okay. that you get this case and it, you can go down to 130 feet with it underwater, straight out of the box. Okay. And so it's just it's just a polycarbonate uh, case. It slides right in, and then snaps together, and that'll. So Even that's waterproof. That's waterproof up to 130 feet. And I've seen people use it. Um, so you're talking about underwater. Are there separate attachments? I've seen people have them on like a bicycle helmet mm -hmm. or other kinds of, you know, for the rock climbing, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Are they, they're obviously yeah. they're meant to be pretty sturdy. Yeah, you can put them on any, any kind of, uh, they, they have, it's called the chesty. It's a chest harness. Okay. That's, that mounts it right here. Oh, okay. They have, uh, Helmet mounts. On top of the helmet, yep. And the, any basically anywhere you can put a strap on, or a strap, yeah. you can attach a, uh, a mount to it. Okay. And what's this, some kind of tripod you have there? This right here is a Joby um, suction cup. Okay. You can attach that to glass and it, it uh, turns to uh, stick onto the okay. glass with a really good, uh, or any smooth surface. So with a really is that good. that's used to stabilize? Uh, well, I use this in a car. I oh. attach it to the uh, the car window. Oh, And okay. then I mount the uh, the GoPro on there, and okay. I can get uh, like the side window or the front window. Okay. Anywhere anywhere that's got smooth glass, you could even attach it to the outside of your car. Oh. And it's it, this has got a, a good enough grip. It'll. It'll hold uh, as long as the, like the metal is clean. Yeah. Okay. Um, so why don't you, sh if you can hold it up there so we can see it, and, mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of hold it still. W can you just show us like how you would turn it on and off, and are there any other, are there different modes that you select on there? Mm -hmm. or I've never used one, so okay. pretend I know nothing, which all is right. not pretending at all. In the case, you, you can't really see the buttons, but there's only three controls. There's the power. There's the mode. And then there's Wi-Fi. Oh. You can you can control this through a a uh, a controller that you can buy, or you can use the app on your phone. Have. Yeah. On a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see on this one, you got power, and then your different modes, and it's hard to see, but it's just a little little button to turn okay. on and off Wi-Fi. Oh, on and off. Oh, the Wi-Fi. Yeah. And why would you want to use that? Uh, if you want to set up your GoPro in a remote location, like say, like say up in the roof or oh. in a tree or oh. underwater, I mean, oh. you wouldn't get too much range underwater. But okay. it's so you can set it up and activate it and stop it without having to be right next to it. Okay. And it takes micro SD cards. Okay, that's for memory. For memory. Yeah. Okay. It has a HDMI connection for output to video. Okay. And a mini USB for power. Um, if you want to uh, recharge it or use it while 
your um, you plug it into the with the uh, USB cable to run it longer than the battery okay. will last. Oh, so when you were talking about the mic, that made me think too. Um, there's obviously a an audio component when you're taking video. Yeah, there are built-in uh, microphone ports. Okay. The this waterproof case obscures the sound a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, because it is encased in plastic. Good there are skeleton housings and frames that are open so that if you, you want to record better audio, you could do that. You, you can also plug in um, a USB microphone to the USB port okay. and get better quality sound that way. Okay. But you lose the, the waterproofing. So it's not something you'd be able to do underwater. Okay. You would do it when you're, when you're sure it's going to be stay dry. Right. And now when you're talking about the memory card, how much footage can you take on a, are there different sizes of the memory cards? Yeah, they're, they're all standard <coughs> uh, memory cards uh, from 2 gig up to 64 gig. So time-wise, if you were recording something, do you know how much time uh, you would have? 16 gigabytes is what I mostly use, about four hours of video. Oh, so quite a lot. Okay. Yeah, quite a, you, you'll <laughs> run out of battery before you run out of video. Oh, how long does the battery last? That's a good... About two hours. Okay. You can buy uh, third-party batteries that are bigger. Okay. That'll extend the uh, recording time. Okay. Uh, but about two hours. Okay, good to know. And so how have you incorporated using the GoPro in your own, I guess, mostly videography then? Mm -hmm. How what, what how do you find it useful or? Um, I don't do action sports. Okay. So the main so <clears throat> what it was developed for is kind of lost on me. Okay. But I like to do um, I like to record everyday life. Okay. Like um, in the, one of the videos, we'll see guys clearing out uh, after the blizzard. Okay. And so I like to do time lapse to show progression of time. Okay. And that's it's time lapse is a good way to do that, and it's it's works the same way as video. So the, the thought processes are very similar. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're going to take a look at some footage that uh, David has shot. We're going to look at two separate clips. He's going to uh, set them up for us. And uh, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to Point and Shoot. Um, today we're talking a little bit of tech talk, and uh, our first guest today is David Parsons. He's joining us uh, to talk about how to use a GoPro with your photography and also videography. Um, we've taken a look at the GoPro, heard a little bit about how to use it, and now we're going to see some footage that Dave has shot um, using the GoPro, and then uh, we're going to talk about, uh, I think you'll be able to see how um, it's very useful in this, you know, in achieving a certain look. So uh, the first, the first thing we're going to see, Dave, uh, what can you tell us about it? Uh, the first one was taken in Jackson Square in May. In Weymouth. During the Heyman run, or the way, the uh, Herring run. Okay. And I, uh, I used the GoPro. Okay. And I attached it to a monopod. You could use a selfie stick, anything like that. And because it's waterproof, I was able to to put the, the GoPro underwater okay. and record a bunch of clips and put them together with the uh, music. Okay, and you had never done this before? Uh, not the fish, no. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna see uh, how it turned out. Let's take a look. I go swimming in the big Egyptian river Bathing in the waters of the Nile the sun is shining down And everybody's happy Bathing in the waters Of the night My job is so secure And my government is stable The weather's getting better A little warmer of the Nile. I, I didn't know what to expect, <laughs> and that was really interesting. I was struck by how clear everything seemed. Were you surprised when you saw it back? 
Uh, that's after after a little bit of work. A and little bit of editing. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the water is a little bit uh, more yellower than I was uh, okay. hoping for, and that was my first attempt at color correcting video. Okay, so a little bit of color correction, but just the like the bubbles, the action. I mean, you're really up close. That's something you would never. Yeah, I don't some, know how you would capture that. Yeah, with, without something like a GoPro, that's that's really hard to get. Okay, so that in that case, that that worked out, and you obviously had it in the in the waterproof case, mm -hmm. and no issues with that. No, no problems at all. Okay, all right, we're going to take a, a w another look at um, one additional clip, and uh, what can you tell us about this? Uh, this one was after the first blizzard of last winter. Okay. Uh, the one they named Juno. Okay. And it was partly it was. Uh, record it's, it's it's all time lapse. Okay. So partly it's as the snow is falling, and the rest is me digging a path out so I can get back to civilization. Okay. So time lapse. How does that work? How do you set that up? The the GoPro has a mode. Uh, it's built into the into the camera where it'll you set the set the interval. Okay. And in this in this video, it's all one frame per second. Okay. So it's it's sped up about uh, sixty times. Oh wow. So. With the time lapse, it it makes things go faster than than it would normally be able okay. to see. Okay, and I I've seen some other footage that you've shot, so I know this is something that you've done before. Yeah, this is yeah. something I enjoy doing with my GoPro. Okay, good. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so there again, um, it, that's a completely different effect. Mm -hmm. I mean, totally different, still environmental kind of, but mm -hmm. um, I could see in that case that's something that would be difficult to do with a DSLR. First of all, you wouldn't want to expose your camera to the elements like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, that was kind of interesting. And with the time lapse, a completely, you know, you, you really get a feeling for what was going on. Yeah, that was, uh, to film that, that was about two, two and a half hours of actual shoveling. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> not looking forward to that. <laughs> but anyway, okay, well, um, Dave, I really want to thank you for being our guest. Well, we are going to take a quick break. Uh, we've had a great discussion about how to use the GoPro, and when we come back, we're going to be talking to another guest, John Galvin. He is the founder of Die Fi Video Productions, and uh, he's going to show us how to use that same GoPro with a drone to get those aerial shots that you've always wanted to get. So um, stay tuned and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Hey, welcome back to Point and Shoot. We're uh, having a little bit of a tech day today. We just had David Parsons on, a guest, talking to us about how to use a GoPro in your photography and video uh, videography. And uh, now we're going to take on that theme and carry it over to another use. Um, we're going to be talking to another guest, John Galvin. He's here today from Die 5 Video Productions. So welcome, John. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, John started his company, which um, specializes in um, high-def video. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about how to use a, the GoPro along with a drone. Um, we're going to take a close look at that, but first, um, John, what can you tell us about how you started using this equipment? Well, I've been in the video business for about 12 years, and I started with uh, event videography. I did a lot of uh, sporting events and performing arts events and things like that, and I've been going along uh, that for the last couple of years and I've realized now that the, uh, the the real estate market has really become a booming area for video so I wanted to expand into the video market and, and real estate video market 
and uh, talking to a couple of agents that I know that you know very well as well right. uh, was recommended to me that I should really focus on aerial. So I thought about it and decided that I'd get a training drone and I started learning how to fly and after several crashes <laughs> with my training drone, I was ready to go on out and get a commercial train uh, drone that I could actually fly and take quality video and photography with. Okay, so basically the idea when you talk about aerial photography, whether it's for sports or real estate, you're getting that perspective uh, from up in the air, right? That's the basic idea. Absolutely. The, you know, the air, you think about the NFL nowadays <laughs> and they have the cameras that are just flying back and forth across the field on cables and that's the thought of, of the drone in that you're able to um, get out in a perspective above the action, whether it be on the field or in real estate above the house, showing the area around the house, which is especially useful in towns like Hingham, Cohasset, and Situate, where you're on the water and you want to see, you know, the beautiful scenery. Sure. So transitioning from our discussion about the GoPro, um, what GoPro do you use with this? Does it matter or do you recommend a particular GoPro to use I, with the I drone? Have, I have the Hero uh, 4 Black Okay. Um, only because that's the most recent one and I'm, I've only been doing this for about six months now and that was the newest one. Okay. Uh, my drone actually is a 3DR Solo and 3DR Solo has specifically designed this drone to work with the GoPro. Okay. So I wanted to make sure I had the most up-to-date GoPro so I could get the most features out of this drone that I possibly could. Okay. So if you want to give us just a very basic um, identification of the parts of the drone and then just tell us very simply how you use it. Sure. Well, obviously the most important part is the bird itself and uh, the Solo actually is uh, a quadcopter um, and it's basically, uh, you know, going to fly similar to the way a helicopter would fly um, and so it's going to be stable on the air and it's going to rotate around. Okay. Um, then obviously the next thing here is the GoPro um, and the GoPro is mounted on, I don't want to drop this thing, mm -hmm. Um, the GoPro is m mounted on to the uh, quadcopter with what's called a gimbal. And if I'm not sure if they're getting this or not, but you can see as the, the quadcopter moves, the camera is uh, kept in a stable, stable. position right. so that the, the footage that we get is you know, as stable as possibly okay. we can get. Um, so those are the, the parts of the bird, uh, the camera, and the gimbal. Okay. Um, now. Obviously, it's we're not inside piloting it, so we need to have a way to pilot it. Okay. So we have our controller, and the controller here uh, is very looks very similar to a game controller, right. where I've got control sticks that are going to control altitude, um, speed, direction. I can rotate it, um, but I also have different features in which I can control the camera, um, in which I can actually control the the uh, tilt of the camera, um, and uh, the other thing would be my cell phone or a pad or whatever, which is actually getting um, the view from the camera on board the copter so that so you when can I'm see flying, what I can actually see seeing. what it sees. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so that way I can control the shot. You know, I'm a cameraman, so I'm using this as a cameraman. I need to see what the camera sees so that I can control my shots, whether it be still photography or video, okay. so that I know what the camera is, uh, is actually All shooting. All right. It sounds, I have no experience with this. It sounds a little complicated. How, for a novice, if they're trying this for the first time, how long did it take you to sort of get the touch of you know, controlling it. Well, before I started flying with my commercial drone, I bought a, I want to call it a toy drone. It was about an $80 okay. drone. And uh, I learned to fly with that. And uh, honestly, after several crashes, um, I started to learn a little bit how to fly. And okay. I think that was really important for me to learn how to fly first. Um, you know, I mean, I stayed at it. It took me a couple months before I could fly without crashing. Okay, so it takes a little practice. It takes a little practice. And um, what's the cost of this drone? Uh, well, this drone, uh, along with the GoPro, the gimbal, and let's say everybody's going to have a cell phone, but all together it's a little over $2,000. Okay, and that comes with the controller Comes as with well? the controller the gimbal, 
And the GoPro is, is an addition, so you can buy the GoPro any way you want, try to get it on sale. Okay, and the drone runs on a battery? The drone, yeah, the drone actually runs on, uh, what a, on batteries that, oh, that probably wasn't too smart to take the battery out when the bird was going, <laughs> but it's just a, a, a battery like this that's going to uh, last about 20 minutes okay. in the air. So I have several of these in order to um, properly, you know, to get, the shots that I need okay. over time. Good. All right. Well, um, we've seen the parts. We've heard about it. Let's. Uh, we're going to go outside our HCAM studios and take a look at this drone in action and watch um, John pilot it. So, uh, why don't you head out back with us? Are back inside the HCAM studios after being outside and seeing that demonstration. Um, so I don't know if uh, you viewers could tell, but it was a pretty windy day out there. Um, but yet you could see the stabilization of the drone. It seemed, you know, we, we had a very easy lift off and set down. So um, explain to us how it was that the drone wasn't being pushed around by the wind sure, while we were out there. Sure. There's, there's actually uh, two things that the drone has. Um, the first is a GPS connection similar to like what you'd get in your car. Um, so the first thing when we're doing pre-flight is we need to turn the drone on and allow it to uh, capture satellites just like your GPS would in your car. Okay. Um, we, we're required to get at least eight satellites in order to take off. Oh. So once we acquired the satellites, then the drone knows its GPS position, including where it's taking off from. So as the drone lifts off, it's using the GPS to stabilize itself. So as it's getting um, pushed on by the wind, the drone itself will actually automatically adjust to keep itself as steady as possible, mm. and I don't have to do anything. Wow. Uh, which is great as a videographer. Right. Uh, the, the, bird will stay where it needs to stay and I can concentrate on the uh, getting the shot that I'm actually looking for. Okay. Um, the second thing that uh, the drone has is the ability to communicate with the controller and that's actually a standard Wi-Fi setup that the bird has itself and there's a computer in the bird and a computer in the um, controller and they will communicate by Wi-Fi and that'll actually send the feed to my phone so that we can actually get the video feed okay. from the bird. So it sounds like the developers have pretty much thought of everything. Now we're going to see some footage that was taken with the drone. Um, why don't you set this up? It was involving a real estate shoot, Yeah, correct? so uh, I'm working with a um, uh, William Ravis down in the Cohasset office okay. on this one, and they had property um, on a lily pond, and the lily pond was a beautiful outside setting. They had beautiful gardens, and so we wanted to get a shot, um, obviously an aerial video of the property incorporating the lily pond. Let's take a look at that video. and that was really interesting video. I think you were able to see the perspective that you really could only get from the air in that. I mean, how could you get that shot from the ground? Well, I mean, it used to be in the, in the old days, they used to bring in cranes. <laughs> and seriously, no, yeah. I, was, I was talking to, uh, talking to a, uh, having a tree cut down in my backyard, yeah. and the guy was telling me how he used to go out and do video shoots with his tree crane and you know obviously a lot of money to do that yeah. so uh, so yeah. this is uh, technology using technology uh, to help your photography and video videography in this case as well but these GoPros also take uh, still shots so I want to thank my guests today John Galvin and uh, David Parsons 
for giving us a lot of information about how to use a GoPro, how to use that GoPro with a drone. I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you go out there and uh, integrate this into your own photography. All you have to do is point and shoot.